Hey guys, I'm making a video today to talk about the screen tight system that I'm using for my back patio to screen in the area. If you've already looked up this video, you probably already know what the screen tight system is. It's essentially a track system where you install a base on essentially 2x4 construction or possibly 4x4 construction. Uh, you lay the track, put the screen in place, you put the spline in, and then you put a decorative cap on top. Uh, most of the videos that I see online are ones uh, basically just somebody doing it real quick and it shows how quick and simple it is. It's also videos made by the manufacturer that show the process and they just show the most generic installation, make it look like it's super quick and easy and it makes it look like it goes in so fast. Well, I'm, this is more of a reality video of how it actually is installed. Um, they don't talk about all the different problems you may face when installing it because they make it look like it's the most seamless installation But you will run into some problems and this video is to show all the kind of problems you can run into and solutions to those problems And also a few little tips and tricks to hopefully let this process go by a little bit quicker with a little bit less headaches This video is not sponsored at all by screen tight. It's all this material been paid for by myself so hopefully this this video is uh, considered unbiased uh, even though I did pay for it out of my own money, it is slightly biased because I don't want to look like an idiot for buying a stupid system, even though I don't think it is. Uh, so anyway, here's the video. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is what kind of tools you need to help this process uh, go by quicker. And uh, let's go with that. All right, so the first thing you're going to need uh, for this system, obviously, is you want some base track. Um, you can calculate that yourself and figure that out. Uh, this comes in two different varieties. This is the one and a half inch wide section, which is what I use for two by four construction. They do make wider sections for four by four construction. Uh, but my whole patio here has been constructed with two by fours or two by twos actually for the ledge area. Um, this is the protective cap. So pretty much for every foot of this you buy, you wanna buy um, the protective cap or not protective cap, de decorative cap uh, in your color choice or whichever one fits your needs get you a big old box of spline uh, the spline size will coincide with what kind of screen you're using uh, if you're using fiberglass I think it util or I'm sorry fiberglass um, is what I'm using and this is or vinyl or the, the softer screen and it's a uh, 0.175 uh, thickness spline I think you use a smaller spline if you're using the harder uh, aluminum uh, screening you know obviously get your screen um, and again you can calculate that for, for your needs always for all these materials always add like 10% or 15% for waste because you will you will cut off a lot and then you'll have a bunch of scraps building materials that you need to provide yourself that are not screen tight related uh, they recommend using drywall screws and I'm, I'm not a big fan of that because drywall screws are not exterior rated. They don't have a coating that's suitable for the outside elements. And even though the screws will be covered by the decorative cap, moisture will eventually get behind there. And also the moisture that's still within the pressure treated wood that you're using will get into the screw. And eventually the, the outer surface of the screw will rust. And if you have a painted patio, uh, but the two by fours are white, uh, eventually you might start seeing uh, rust trails orange streaks coming out from the sides from where those screws are starting to rust and for that that's why I recommend uh, exterior screws uh, I picked these up uh, I think Home Depot and Lowe's both sell the same brand these are the grip right ones uh, the smallest length I could find was one and a quarter these are number eight screws they come with a Torx bit the only issue that I have with the well actually I have two little issues with these uh, these are what they call um, funnel head screws so the head of it is not exactly flat underneath so one thing you got to be careful with when putting it into the 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 hole of the track is if your screw is offset when the funnel part comes down and, and touches the uh, track it will actually shift your track over so you got to be careful with that and make sure that you perfectly center your holes uh, when you do this another issue I have with these screws is because it's such a thick exterior grade uh, paint on these that sometimes the um, there's excess material or, or paint on the screw heads and it keeps you from fully inserting the uh, driver bit into it. So, so be mindful of that. Moving on to tools and pretty much the order that you would use them. First things you're gonna be doing um, is laying the track up against the section that you're gonna be putting it on and marking where you're gonna cut it and then cutting it. Uh, screen type just says cutters. I haven't really seen any details or more 
specifics than that. Uh, I will say the best recommended cutter for this is a utility cutter, one that has a sharp blade on one side and has a platen, or I guess you would almost call it like an anvil, to where it squeezes that sharp blade into it. Remember, um, if you know the old Craftsman Handy Cut, same, same kind of style cutter, uh, but I think these are called util utility cutters. I think I've also seen them called edge cutters. Uh, two tools that I don't recommend that you may have and you may think that will work is uh, snips like this. These do actually cut. The only problem is it will deform uh, the track at the ends because it actually because the, these actually only cut by shearing and not actually um, putting a sharp blade into it. So it actually squeezes for a while until it shears. Same thing goes with giant you know shears don't use these two use the uh, edge cutter utility cutters when you're putting these on um, my recommendation is get two use two drills or, or a drill and an impact driver and this makes this go a whole lot faster than having to switch bits um, even though it's pressure treated wood you can drive a screw in without usually splitting the wood I recommend using a drill bit because then that way you can get your hole centered in the slot and also drill it straighter if you try to uh, drill the screw straight in without without pre-drilling you know it, it it starts getting wobbly and especially the fact where I said the exterior screws uh, sometimes don't have as much grip uh, because of the excess material in it so I highly recommend getting a drill and getting a impact driver or another drill uh, also recommend just getting one of the little 12 volt ones uh, these work fine for this because these are small screws they're only number eight they only go in an inch and a quarter so you don't need the big 20 volt systems for this and plus the added weight of the 20 volt you know drills will add more fatigue to you as you do a, about 300 different screws throughout the installation of this system going along with the drills i highly recommend uh, you get a tool belt uh, this one right here has been pieced together from different components i have two drill holsters uh, for my belt so when you're up on a ladder it's it's so much easier to have you know your drill and then boom 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 drill your holes holster it pull out your impact uh, driver or other drill and put, pop all your screws in at once uh, also make sure you got another pouch where you can put all your screws in so when you're done drilling or each time you can just reach back grab each screw and this saves a significant amount of time uh, also make sure you have pockets for the other stuff that you might be utilizing while you're up on the ladder, such as a cutter or potentially anything else. Now, when you're placing um, the strips in place, when you're pre-drilling, uh, what I usually do, and I'll show this later, is I'll take the strip, I'll pop it on there, I clamp it in place, use, utilizing two of these little quick grip Irwin clamps. These are pretty much inexpensive. I use them all the time. So if you don't have a set, go ahead and get you some of these. For uh, popping in the screen, uh, utility knife real simple and one of these cheap spline tools i got one with a smaller diameter wheel than some of the ones that have a two inch wheel i don't know if it really makes a difference but because of the smaller diameter if you have a track up against a wall and it's hard to get into the smaller diameter will get that spline in there a little bit better and then the only tool that you really need uh, for popping on the decorative cap will be um, the cutters again because you're going to be cutting the size and then just a, a rubber mallet i'm using this uh this style hammer but you can also use the bigger black rubber mallet you're more probably accustomed to all right so let's get started all right so the way i did my construction is i went ahead and did the base tracks vertically across each one I, that's just the way i i like the way it looked or the way i wanted it to be uh, i don't have any extra um base plates to really go through the whole pure process here, but I, I, I can do enough here, I think, to show you what's going on. So let's pretend this is a long stick. Um, what you wanna do is take the end here and place it up against the edge of the next stick or the edge um, of what's enclosing it. And then we'll take this piece here to act like it's oversized or sticking over. So you gotta put there Take your cutters and then we'll just you know right where you think it should be just snip the little edge right there all right so we'll pretend that this is it uh, one thing i want to say about these cutters uh when you cut this is very important 
put the edge that does the cutting on where the channel ridges are or if it's the cap the 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 fingers that slide into the channel always put the flat side of the channel or the base piece or the cap against this this flat piece of the cutters and the reason why I'll show you what happens if you don't if you put the flat piece on I don't know if you can see that but it deforms the ends so if you put the sharp side on the ridge area it makes a cleaner cut all right and the reason I won't cut it in place is because it's kind of hard to see if it's perfectly square so I like to make a little you know cut mark on the side pull it away make sure you get a nice straight cut and then we can put it back all right now if you have let's say you have a long piece you cut this piece you have pieces left over you're up on a ladder uh, what do you do with that extra piece especially if you're going to cut that leftover piece into another piece uh, that you're going to use well you know well you, you can't just hold on to it here here's a little trick uh, that I found out myself I, I don't think anybody's ever shown this yet um, take your excess piece find a channel that's already attached just attach to the wall you know even if you have the full 10 foot side or 10 or 8 foot or these 8 foot long I think it only takes about a foot especially if it's vertical uh, to hold it in place so there's a fancy little tip right there all right so get it in place one thing you want to be mindful of do not follow the uh, the way the board goes because when this pressure treated boards when they dry sometimes they bow just a little bit okay and if you follow it and you put a bow trying to follow the 2x4 what's going to happen is when you put that cap on you're going to see that bow you will see the wave from following it so really what you want to do is let the natural these things are pretty well straight from the factory pretty well I mean visually um, you pretty much want to just secure both ends and let it naturally flow in between now on your ends if you're up against the intersection what you want to do is line up these channels to make them perfectly in line with the channel over here because if you let's say get it here when you put that cap on you're gonna see that step all right so let's make sure that when you clamp these down again I'm grabbing my quick clamp here that these are lined up and like I said naturally let it go along the, the way here and then just line this area up you know I try to go to the center of the board if there's nothing else already set here because then you'll just center it off the next one if that makes sense all right <clears throat> get your drill um, I'm using a 332nd drill bit uh, you can use 1 8 I just want a little bit smaller since uh, the smaller it is the less wandering it'll do find your holes and get your drill bit and put it dead center and push hard to make a indentation all right um, to kind of uh, kind of self center punch the uh, the hole when you apply pressure to it it's less and, and kind of already put an indentation to it it's less likely that the bit will wander and get this off center so once you do that and you got it pushed in just go all the way you know drill her on home uh, get your holes if you do not have a hole within two inches of the ends uh, go ahead and drill through the material and into the wood uh, to add that because if we went just like based off this one and you had a hole here this side right here would just be flapping uh, without being secured uh, if you're looking at it if you're on the fence about whether or not it's within two inches don't even worry about measuring it just go ahead and drill the hole and add another screw I mean if you're already doing 300 screws add another one or two it ain't gonna hurt um, about 80 90 percent of the um, the channels here when you cut them there's not going to be a screw there uh, so just go ahead and add one really and then uh, once all your holes are drilled like I said do it all in one swoop here just drill 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 switch over to your impact driver or your other drill uh, and screw them in when you screw these in don't go all the way just enough to where it really touches the uh, the, the funnel head touches the the, the little sides here this opening of the channel because if you do over tighten it too much it will actually curl the channel into like a you know a u-shape 
And one thing you'll notice of this whole process, I have not stepped down one time from my ladder. I'm actually, you know, up here on the, the top rung. So, you know, if you don't have a tool belt, you'll probably be making multiple trips up and down the ladder. Or you'll be putting your tools right here on your footrest and have a chance of knocking them over and hitting the ground. So we'll get this last piece in. This, this part of the process is very simple. It's uh, really, really the, the hard part comes from the screening more than anything. There's that. So it's lined up, lined up, ready to go. Go on to the next one. All right, one thing I want to let you know is, uh, I don't know if you can see this or not. I left gaps right there you can kind of see that at the top gaps between these channels are all right i mean you can leave like an eighth of an inch and still be okay uh it'll still work fine the main time you you don't want to have gaps is is on that uh the decorative cap so in case you're wondering is it okay to have a little bit of gap yes it is okay and also, no, you do not have to miter anything here. Everything here is done with snips or, the, or those utility cutters with just straight 90 degree cuts. No mitering is required whatsoever with these. All right, I think I may do two of these to show you. I'm gonna do a small um, kind of like transom um, panel up here and then I'll do the main one. Uh, only tools you're gonna need is utility cutter or utility knife and a spline tool and you need a box of spline. All right, so I have the box of spline at the top rung of my ladder. Uh, I'm gonna do this one with a, already a pre-cut um, piece. All right, so when you put this in, go towards the top and you want to, uh, at least two inches around every way. All right, so just let it loose on that corner or everywhere else cut you two pieces of spline about an inch and a half two inches and use it to hold the piece in place and then you know there's there's tiny little squares in the screen here so try to align that square you know that's inside the middle of the channel follow along and this part it's not too critical at this point that looks about right and then put your uh, other piece of spline don't put it in all the way you want to kind of like leave a tail so you can pull it out so look at your squares make sure you're kind of you know in line or the squares are in line with your frame. Makes it a whole lot easier to, to do this part because you can kind of keep an eye on how your alignment's going. So then, if you have this on a roll, you can take the clamps, clamp the roll down here somewhere as you're putting this piece up. And then, once you get these two pieces in, you can cut about, like I said, about two inches below to have that piece pre-cut. This one's just a leftover piece. It's only got an extra like foot or two. I'm gonna leave it alone for this part. I'll show you the full roll scenario on this big panel underneath. This part's going to be a little bit long because I'm going to try to do this in real time. So if I have any kind of mistakes or anything, I can show you how to fix them. All right. So grab your spline tool and find the end that has a U shape. All right. One thing you can do if you want to, you can use the regular side and kind of pre, you know, roll that in there but I don't find that necessarily or necessary all right hold your hand up here pull your piece out you start with and leave it now eh, about three quarters of an inch and a half inch sticking out and the reason for that is every once in a while when you're rolling this through it'll pull the spline a little bit all right so if you start out with it flush right here at the edge and you start pulling you'll find out that spline spline will start moving a little bit and you'll have about an inch or so that's unsplined and that's okay because you can always just cut a piece of spline that's that size and roll it into that groove and it'll fix it but to go ahead and 
prevent that that part just go ahead and have a little bit of excess tail hanging out right there so while this part's holding up here a little bit what you can do it makes it a little bit harder here with this edge is kind of keep watching find find some of the squares that's in that channel and it's going to be really hard to show this on camera but once you're doing it you'll see what i'm talking about and go out a good you know foot foot and a half hold your finger there and keep it tight also when you're doing the top rung keep pressure away from where the spline is now here's another trick keep the spline in line with the way you're going because if you're trying to roll it this way you're trying to fight that uh, tendency for this to roll over that edge and when it bumps over you can jab into your screen and actually cause a hole and then guess what you're, you're redoing everything so take your spline hold your thumb like that and start rolling it now this part yeah yeah that, it, like I've done this you know I've done a few panels here it's gonna look easy your first time doing it I mean don't don't worry if it takes you a while to do it or if you gotta pull the spline back out redo it pull the spline back out and redo it it really takes about three to four panels to really get a good groove going on this and see what's happening all right see right there how that kind of popped you want to be careful of that luckily there was no tension on this otherwise I probably would have put a hole in the screen all right once you get to your finger move over some more make sure your little squares of the screen are lined up put your index finger down a ways again start rolling up going against my own device here when that spline is lined up with that channel it goes so much easier otherwise you have to keep bumping it to get it seated now when you're about a foot away from the end you can go ahead and take your end piece out line up those lines and then some of the screen is super fine so sometimes it can be hard to see I got it right there now, this is why I say it takes a little bit of time because the more time you take doing it the easier it will go this part actually goes in pretty easy because there's no tension on it now what I do is I take a utility knife and this really goes against all safety standards here but I take the blade and I face the blade away from the screen because I do not want to cut the screen and then I just put a little bit of pressure on it and get that excess I'll show you over here push it up against my finger yeah I know go ahead and put the hate comments below that I'm doing it this way or you can take scissors and do it so the top piece is done again when you're doing the top you want to pull all your tension along the channel now right here it's opened up on both sides uh, but if one of these was up against a wall what I recommend doing is doing that side first all right because you really don't have an easy way to pull sideways tension and then when you do your first side you're going to be putting a lot of tension in the downward motion and a little bit out whereas on the other side you're going to be putting more tension outwards as well as down so you really need to have that that movement or that area of movement all right so when we get the uh, side part started here and you can already see that that spline's pulled in just a hair already so when you start this out I hope this shows up I pull it up just a little bit and there's gonna be a little bit of a wrinkle right there but I want to keep my, my squares lined up all right so yeah, kind of push it in my hand to get started or at least hold it in place grab the u-shape side of your spline tool roll that first little bit in that first little bit's a little bit hard because there is like a little slight wrinkle to it and now I'll move my ladder over like I said I'm gonna try to do this all in real time so you can see you know what it looks like I don't want to have any kind of camera cuts I have to do it when I'm 
All right, and what I'm gonna do here is again, try to, you know, I don't even like that. I'm gonna pull it over a little more. There we go. All right, so what we're doing here is we're gonna be pulling down and actually, if your squares are lined up, like that right there, and keep pulling tension down. Make sure your lines are lined up, everything looks good. I grab my utility knife. And when you're I'm doing this channel, and if you've got an intersection here, you want to cut your spline right there in the middle so that way it doesn't interfere with the next section. And I'm fighting a storm here today. There's a little bit of a rainstorm here, and I had to actually add a cut to my video here, which I didn't really want to do, but Moving on. All right, for the second side, you're gonna do a very similar uh, process here. And we're gonna do the same thing like we did starting out. We're gonna kind of pull it tight and keep the squares lined up. Take your tool again with the U-shaped side. And we'll dig it in there. Like I said, it takes a lot of force to get it in there with that little bit of wrinkle. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing, make sure we're staying lined up. And like I said, you're going to this time we're putting force this way, so you're pulling almost like a 45 degree angle, uh, maybe more towards down. All right, so we're going to do that, pull it tight. And, you know, the spline is naturally falling in line, so that's going to make this a little bit easier. Uh, let's see right there. It's, it's, it's moving a little bit. So don't, there it is. So I like that. Yep, I don't like it. Go back up a little bit. Man, I really don't like that. Again, yeah, see, I, I messed up a little bit. All right, we got to pull tight to the side. Jab it in there. Now, starting out, I think I pull a little bit here to the side. And then gradually. If you can feel when you're grabbing this and when you're putting the spline in, if you can feel it pulling away from you where you're grabbing it, that's good. That means it's not pulling slack or there's no extra material in between. So you should constantly feel that material pulling away from your hand. See, I can already feel it's getting tight. All right, so we get about the midway point right here. Oh man, that's really good. It feels like my best one yet. I'm on camera, it's good. So I pull it up a little bit. Just let that blade do its own work here. Put the excess in there and that's it for the side. All right, so let's move on to the bottom. I will cut just to move the camera uh, to show you the next part. All right, now this step right here may be the most important uh, as you. This is where you got to apply the most tension. And the other thing you need to make sure you pay attention to is you're always doing the inner channel. Don't do accidentally do the outer channel. I've done that on a panel and I had to pull it all back out and start again. And that was actually after I cut, so I had less material to even grab. Uh, if you do it on the outer channel, 
well you can't do the the next panel or if it's at the end you won't be able to get your cap in because your cap fits in this area so make sure you do the right area again leave a little excess there on this one you pull it tight when you do this. This is a little tedious here, but oh, it's hard getting that first one in. You always want, you're afraid you're gonna slip and hit the screen. Let's get it. All right. So another trick, instead of holding it with your finger, take all this excess slack. I think you can see this, hopefully. I'm gonna lay this, all that extra slack, in the next panel next to it, and then pull it tight a little bit. At least it kinda keeps it in line right there without having to hold my finger up on it because now I can devote most of my attention to pulling down and that's what you're going to be doing on this one is pulling straight down and this one may be the hard oh shoot see you gotta be careful that's another tip when you're rolling this in take the angle of this away from the main area screen. So that way if it does slip, it hits down here and not into your screen. This scene always seems to be the toughest, probably because there's the most tension on this one. And that's what makes it the hardest. Yeah, you can see all that grunt work I'm doing, or grunting I'm doing just with this first six inches. Yeah, this is, this is probably the toughest part. Yeah, you can see how tight that's getting now. Sometimes it helps to get a little short. See how I'm going back and forth, working it that way? Seems to help it go a little bit easier. if I cut this down it been easier as well and I keep checking making sure it's still tight along the way I'll pull that slack up a little bit Said you're pulling mostly down on this one. That's yeah, that's getting real nice and tight. And we'll move the ladder over. Oh, keep checking it. And roll it all the way to that edge right there. And that feels like the tightest pedal I've done actually. I'm going to 
cut the excess off here. Again, blade away. always go over all your splines to make sure they're fully seated they are so now I'm going to cut the excess off I'll get that little tail here in a little bit so what you do is you take your blade, and it's kind of hard to see on this side, and I'll, I'll do a zoom in when you're on the closer angle, but you go on the inside part of the channel where the screws are, and just use the channel itself as a guide, and then these little corners are a little tricky, but then you just got to cut into that. here cut that off pull my hand up here so you can see better so if you take that knife put it in that channel kind of pull the material away boom that's it like I said, it, it takes a actually it takes some time to do each panel, but if you take your time, you can get a nice professional look to it. So this is what it looks like when you're done. All right. So I guess we'll move on to a big one. I'm gonna do that one real quick. I mean, because all the majority of the tips are in that is just so so you guys can see me uh, get aggravated. I guess with the big one. All right, I got my roll and I got my two little pieces. I wonder if I'm putting them out here. Like I said, you do about two inches above. Kind of keep it straight. Just, uh, well, oh, that's angled. Yeah, you know, all we're doing is putting it in here to hold it. And kind of get this lined up. These these rolls aren't exactly rolled up the straightest. And I'll roll it down. I'll move the camera here once I get to the bottom. you get it all the way down should have shifted that over a little bit I'll cut that afterwards get down about right here and then take the blade boom that's how you pre-cut it do it on there so much easier All right, now I think what I'm going to do, is actually I think I'm going to readjust this. We'll move. Uh, this over, give myself some more slack on this end.
Yeah. Made my openings a little bit too big. I think I got the widest screen I could. So be mindful of that, of what the standard sizes are. And like I said, I'm gonna run through this one real quick. Once I get a problem, then I'll slow it down and we'll talk about it. Keep that, One thing you can do is also stick your thumb out in front of that spline. That last little bit moved down.
All right, there's a big panel. Uh, it, was, it was kind of a garbage video shoot, but just showing. Yeah, I didn't get really the part of me trimming up top, but that's it's all the same. It's pretty, pretty tight. Uh, the smaller they are, it seems like the tighter you can get them. Um, but definitely satisfactory with that. It's tighter than what I can get with probably staples. All right, next up, I'll show you how to put the caps on after everything. All right, so the footage of the uh, back panel one exactly or the the big panel one exactly the greatest um so i decided to edit a lot of that out um there's really nothing much difference between the smaller one and the bigger one uh it's just bigger is all it is um now we're moving on to the caps and this is a really simple process i know a lot of people um say they have a hard time getting these in i I'm, i haven't found a problem getting these in unless you have the track so far up against like a post or something that it's compressing the track to where the 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 side of the <clears throat> cap can't fit in there right that's all that's the only issue i've had uh this is pretty simple here um you know grab your piece put it all the way up against get my microphone out of the way here all the way up against the top there come on down and do the same thing like we did with the uh, others let me double check my measurement here make you a little mark <clears throat> then clip it again clip the uh, sharp side to ridge, ridge side and I'm gonna go ahead and clip it the wrong way just to show you uh, how to fix it. This is a real quick fix if you did do it that way. Because it's also harder to. Alright. If you do it the wrong way, you'll probably see how it's got those, those dents or indentations. Well, if you accidentally do it that way, just kind of cut away the parts that are sticking out. Kind of reform it is what you're doing. If you don't do this, I've, I've had, I did one one way and didn't even notice it. And I had a problem with getting it back in place. All right, so do that. That's pretty. And just kind of trim those up a little bit. And that should be good. So we're going to pop this on with the mallet here. <clears throat> Make sure it's nice and clean. I don't want to get dirtier than I have to. Boom. It's in there then shift it up as much as you can when you hammer the caps in don't hammer in the direction that you're going because what will happen is each sequential blow will start pulling this down away so you want to keep your taps pretty you know perpendicular to the actual um, base and then just do a series of quick taps real close together all the way down All right, so that one's just a hair long. All right, so I just had to pry it off with the screwdriver and actually just reseat it. I just, uh, it got shifted down just a hair um, when I did it. After you've done, after you think you're done hammering it in, kind of take a view from the side and you can see if a spot's not fully hammered in because you'll see a little bump, but it's, it's more apparent when you look at it from the side. All right, so I'm gonna finish this up and I may show one in between here. All right, so I'm gonna show you a little variation on what I just did here. 
Uh, I hammered it in at the top on this one and then pretty much the rest of it's just uh, loose, flapping in the wind. So I'm gonna make the cut down here and then just go straight into hammering it. good. I think we're going to do one last little video here of me just doing the bottom one. Uh, just going over it again. One other thing I forgot to add is once you put it in place, if it's shifted bad, don't try to move it while it's in the track because it can grab the screen or the spline and actually shift it and bring the, uh, um, the screen out of position. I actually did one panel and actually did that and had to redo it. So if, it, if it's moved and it's not in the position where you like it, just pull it back out and start all over. It's easier that way. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this one in. Now you can wiggle it a little bit, it ain't gonna hurt nothing like right there. So I'm bringing this one across. try to get it right on the money if anything you can always add about a sixteenth of an inch and just keep kind of cutting it down till it fits real nice and snug and double check your fit make sure it will fit at the end and then when you're hammering again like I said it has a tendency to move so kind of Grab this and push forward or towards where you're coming from. See, it did shift a little bit. Now, see, like I said, if it's just shifted a little bit, it, it won't hurt anything. But if it's like an inch from really hitting it sideways, that'll is what I've seen that messes it up. Like again, like I said again, check from the side. There's no waves in it, so it's fully seated. That's it. All right, so that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, I'm not really exactly finished with this yet, um, but pretty much all the steps I showed you is just repetition of that. There shouldn't be anything new involved with it. Uh, hopefully, this video helped you out, and maybe save some frustration, get a better understanding of how the the the, the process works. And overall, I'm very very happy with the system I think I think it's worth the the extra money to, to do it this way I don't think I would have been able to get these screens as tight as I did by hand with the staple method and putting lattice strips on top um, also one thing I like about this is in the future if you ever put a hole in this one uh, one of these screens here it'd be easy you know you just pop the trim off pull the spline out and you could replace that one section of screen pretty easy and, th and that to me is one of the, the better benefits of that I got kids so I, I'm, there's going to be some hands going through some of these screens. I can see that. Um, in case you're wondering about the patio I'm, I've got, I've only done it down to about two foot above grade. And the reason why is because of the bottom, I'm actually putting uh, hardy plank siding around the bottom. So that's what that is in case you're wondering. Um, hopefully this, this video helped you out. And if so, uh, check out my other videos. I, I, my channel is all kinds of random stuff. Uh, if you like the other videos, you know, think about subscribing, hit the subscribe button. And if you like this video, hit the like button. And thanks for watching.